In this video, I will demonstrate how to sketch a sinusoidal graph by applying transformations to the sine function. After watching this video, you too will be able to use this method to sketch sinusoidal graphs by hand. So the function that we want to graph is uh, y equals 3 sine 2 x minus pi over 3 minus 1. Uh, we'll start by graphing one cycle of the sine function. And uh, I will add some key points. Uh, which will include the x-intercepts as well as the minimum and maximum points. I will apply the appropriate transformations to these points to discover where the image of this cycle ends up and from there extrapolate the rest of the, of the graph. Uh, with this setup I can now look at the equation for clues about the transformation. Now recall that we should always apply stretches before translations when it comes to transformations. The a value of 3 indicates that we should vertically stretch the sine curve about the x-axis by a factor of 3. Uh, or another way of thinking about it is that we need to take the y-coordinates of each of these key points and multiply them by 3. So let's see what this would look like. Okay. And essentially what would happen is we would have three invariant points and two points that would actually be affected. So this uh, point right here used to be at 1 and now I've multiplied it by 3 and so the 3 the point moves up here. This used to be uh, this point used to be at negative one. Multiply that by three goes to negative three. And these points are effectively at zero, y equals zero. So multiplying them by three doesn't actually change anything. Now, if we wanted to just graph y equals three sine x and not this function, then we could connect the points right now. But uh, one thing to keep in mind is for you not to uh, plot the points or connect the points, I should say. Uh, like this. Okay. Um, yes, the points are connected, but that's not really what a sine function looks like. So please don't do it this way. Instead, do it this way. Connect the points with a smooth curve. Um, okay, so we're not actually just graphing y equals 3 sine x. We're graphing this function, so we're not even at the stage where we're ready to connect the points, smooth curve or not. So let's move on. Uh, next, we see that we can apply another stretch, okay? Um, and this time it's a horizontal stretch about the y-axis by a factor of half, right? Remember, you have to reciprocate that too. That means all of the x-coordinates will be halved. Now, watch what happens as I have every x-coordinate, okay? So maybe focus your attention on this point right here, which is six units away from the y-axis. Okay, so that point gets halved and now it is three units away. Let's watch that again and maybe focus on another point. So you could focus on uh, maybe this point right here at 2 pi, that's an easy one. Right, 2 pi moves to pi and I don't know if you could see out of your peripheral vision that this point here used to be at pi and now it's at pi over 2. Okay, so essentially every x-coordinate is uh, cut in half. And you'll you notice that some points moved a little bit more than other points. Well, that's because half of 2 pi is a greater amount than half of, let's say, pi or half of pi over 2. So now the cycle looks like this, right? And you'll notice that the period is now half of what it used to be, right? Which makes sense because we horizontally stretched the sine function by half. And so it used to be 2 pi, and now it is pi. Uh, now we can move on to the translations. Now, since we can apply them in any order, uh, I'll start with a vertical displacement. Okay, so the vertical displacement says we should uh, shift this graph down one. So I'll shift all of the key points down one. And it also says that we should shift uh, or apply a horizontal phase shift of pi over three radians to the right. So each of these points should go down one and over to the right by pi over three. So let's see this happen uh, one at a time. So every key point moves down one. And now every key point, let's maybe focus on this one here at zero. Every key point now moves to the right pi over three radians. And that's it. Those are the, the final positions of those key points. 
and that will help us to uh, graph one cycle of uh, this function right here. So I'll join those points with a smooth curve. And uh, all I need to do then is to extend this to get the rest of the graph. So let me remove the y equals sine x. And I will uh, add some more points. Um, just a second here. Sorry, there was a little bit of a glitch there. I fixed it now. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'll take these key points and I'll just apply the same pattern. So for example, uh, from this point to this point, you can think of it as uh, I have to go three squares to the right and one, two, three, four, five, six squares up. So from here, I'm going to go six squares up and three squares over and plot a point. And then I'll go three squares over and six squares down, etc. Um, so my points should end up like this. So essentially what I've done is I've created uh, points to be able to help me graph another cycle. And this cycle then would look like this, simply by uh, extending the curve. Uh, now, uh, we have two cycles of the sinusoidal function graphed. And so we're pretty much done. All we have to do is extend both sides uh, to give us the final result. And that will look like this. And there you have a method to sketch sinusoidal functions by applying transformations to the five key points of the cycle.